Somebody need a word today. Somebody need a special blessing today. And only you and you alone can bless. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable. And by sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. so much fun and, and, and I mean clean fun 
just about every week during the spring and the summertime, they used to have parties in the backyard, and I remember those who were back there, Dupuis Center, we had some clean fun. Didn't have any fights and shooting and cutting folks, anything like that. We had some fun. Now, if there was a fight, you fought with these. If you got whipped, you just got whipped. And if you was fool enough to go back and say something and get a whip again, then that was your business. But, but, but we had some fun. Didn't have too much problem, but we had our own problem. But nothing will keep me from getting into this club when they had one initiation that I was afraid of. And I, I said I couldn't do it. And, and it was the last initiation. And after you, after you go through this, if you make it through this, you become part of the party lifers. After everything, going to school, making a fool of yourself, and mix my clothes on and all of that, then you had to gather and laugh for two. The whole club and all of those who wanted to join the club had to gather at the cemetery. And they waited until the sun went down. And all of those who want to become a member of this club, this was your last initiation, you had to walk through the cemetery. Now, you know nobody in their right mind back then, and I believe right now, when it get dark, there's something about a cemetery that nobody wants to walk through. Matter of fact, we was afraid that the dead would get up and do something to us, but it wasn't about the dead. It was a fear that we had. When it came to the cemetery, it was a fear that we had. When it came to the dead, we did not have an understanding. But I do know one thing, that I did not want to walk through that cemetery. You had to walk through one end and come out on the other end. And all I could see was graves and graves and graves. But some kind of how, some kind of way, I got some strength. And I walked through the cemetery. And I came out on the other side. And you talk about a happy soul. Boy, I believe I shout for joy because now I'm a member of the Paradise Social Club. What in the sand, Reverend? Well, I use that scenario to say that there's something about a cemetery that people really don't understand and people really don't want to be bothered with. But sooner or later, if you die before Christ come back, all of us will have to go through the cemetery in order to get to the other side. In other words, death is going to soon knock on your door and you're going to go from where you come from. The Bible says you came from the dust and the dust you shall return. But thank God, it's just a cemetery. It's just a place where the body goes back to. But thank God for you. Wednesday. But every day you can find what Jesus did. On Friday, 
The Bible said that he walked his last walk. The night So, so, so Mary Magdalene ran and got Peter 
and John. And when, and when they heard that, that what the news that Mervis said, now Mervis said that when we got there, the stone was rolled away. Now, if you read this text, the Bible says, upon the first day of the week, when Mervis Magdalene went to the cemetery. But now she said, when we got there, let us know there was more than Mary Magdalene. In order to, to get the clear picture, it was three Marys that went to the cemetery to uh, anoint the body of Christ. But anyhow, they ran to the cemetery. John got there first, and when he got to the sepulchre, he dared not go in. And then Peter finally got there out of prayer. Let me know that Peter was a little older than, than John. But Peter walked in the tomb, and when he Now, you got to get this. 
He said, now go and tell my go. Mary Magdalene, the Bible says she, she, she went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Why is it, Danny, that some churches and some folk think that a woman places in the kitchen and nowhere else? Why do they think that a woman can't carry the word of God? Why? Why do they think that a woman can't teach in church or, and especially a woman can't pray in church, a woman can't preach in church, a woman can't pastor church? Why is it? When the first message, the first message that after Jesus got up out of the grave, it was not to the disciples, go ye therefore to all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son. That See, 
Now, now when, 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 when she told them that, they said that, that, that they stayed in the house. They were behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jews. Because the Jews were still mad. They were still looking for the disciples and the but They were behind locked doors. And the Bible said the same day in the evening, Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. And then he said, Peace again be unto you. And the Bible said, He breathed. And said, receive you the Holy Ghost. Man, there's so much in this text, I can't tell it all the day, but I don't know where you're patient, but let me stop here. First of all, first of all, they had the door locked. Afraid.
and, and, and gave them power. The Bible said uh, there's only 10 of the disciples that was there. Judas, who betrayed Jesus some days ago, and went out and hung himself. I don't know where this guy was, but I do know that he was in the room on Thursday night when Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in the Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. For I go away and prepare a place for you. And if I go away and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, ye may be also. Now he said these words to his disciples on Thursday evening, just before they got him and just before he, he was betrayed. And there was one disciple said, Lord, we know not where thou goest, and how can we know the way? And that disciple was Thomas. Thomas on this night didn't know how to get to the Father. He said, he's because he said, Lord, we know not where thou goest. And Jesus said, Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And maybe somebody here today, you don't know the way, but I'm here to let you know that Jesus, the same Jesus that told Thomas that he was the way, Some things. Uh, 
But I believe that Jesus gave him that power thereafter. It's the eight days and Jesus showed up again. Guess what? They're still behind locked doors. And said the doors were shut. But this glorified body, even matter, can't keep it out. And Jesus walked in the midst of them. And he said, Thomas, see my hands. Thomas, take your finger, put it in the nail prickles. Thomas, you see the sign. Take your hand and thrust it in the sign. Thomas, you see my hand and you see my feet and you see my sign.
in his feet and the gash in his side. It's not so much about the miracles he performed, the blind eyes he opened. That was important. Or making the lame walk and raising the dead, that's important. But the most important thing, he was in a grave all night long. But right in early on Sunday morning, he got up. And that's what brings everything together because if he was still in the grave today, we wouldn't have any hope. We wouldn't have a tomorrow. But he got up. And because he got up, we should say hallelujah.